Hello everybody, Average Gamer here, and welcome to another patch review, or pre-patch review. And this one, patch 1.4.84, aka the patch for Tuesday, September 20th, 2016. We are 2016, right? Yeah, we're 2016. <laughs> in, this pa in this patch, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. We've got the Night Guy, um, we have a new mode for uh, personal play, or the private server. Or the private play, we'll say. Uh, new unit, unit management improvements. Uh, new champion mechs. Uh, mechs that are now available for uh, C-Bills. New cockpit items, titles, badges, you name it, which obviously come with the Night Guyer. Uh, new decals and decal changes. Gameplay fixes, map fixes, mech fixes, uh, mech pattern refits, and other fixes and changes. Obviously, lots of stuff to get into. Obviously, the first thing we're going to go into is the Night Guyer. I got one. I like it. It sounds good. Basically, it's a... Kind of, it's a te technically, it's a heavy omni mech, though it has the, the weapon power and the efficiencies of basically a light assault mech. Um, it basically changes speed for firepower, um, so be careful for that. It's gonna be released for MC on the 6th of October or December, and then it'll be available for uh, C bills for free on January 3rd of 2017. All of them are going to come with one mech module, two weapon modules, two consumable slots, and then one extra mech slash weapon slot, which will be unlocked, obviously, when you max it out. You're going to have the Prime, a.k.a. the Prime S, uh, the A, the B, the C, the D, and the JK, the Jade Knight, or Kite, whatever, the the, the hero, the hero add-on, the hero special. We're also going to have, a, as I mentioned, a stock mech mode. So in private matches now, um, it's going to be classified as a premium option, which means two players have to at least have premium time. Um, what you can do is actually have the option to set up stock loadouts, meaning that the mechs everyone picks are stock only. You also have the ability to change it so that quirks get turned off on a private match. So you can have it so that quirks are off and everyone gets a stock mech. That'd be kind of entertaining. And there also is ignore effects. You can actually turn off the skill tree as well. Uh, so you can basically play with stock mechs and stock mechs only, and that's it. Um, there's new unit, ma unit management improvements. Uh, basically, overall, they've just changed and tweaked a few things there. Nothing too drastic unless you're you're running your uh, your actual unit. Um, overall, most of the changes are associated with uh, you know how much it costs to, to basically put someone in play on your uh, recruit someone into your unit. Mize, no big deal. You know, it's, it's not too big. Uh, they made some changes to the rank management screen and uh, the invitation screen, which isn't too bad. And they made some changes to the coffer management screen. Uh, there is six new, or sorry, eight new uh, champion mechs, four Inner Sphere and four Clan. The Inner Sphere ones are the Crab 27, uh, 27B, Grasshopper 5H, uh, the Panther 10K, and the Zeus 6T. So all of them are available. Um, rough, well, uh, they're, they're pretty expensive when it comes to MC, though. A couple thousand each. Um, the clan mechs are the Highlander, uh, 2CC, the Hunchback 2CC, the Jenner 2CC, sorry, the Jenner 2C, sorry, the Hunchback 2C, the Highlander 2CC, and then the Orion 2CA. There we go. Uh, there is five new mechs available for C-Bills. You got the Cicada 3F for 7.7 .7 million. The Executioner C, which is 17.7 7, million. The Nova, which is 9 million. The Wolverine 7D, which is 7.9 million. And then the Zeus, which is 11.2 million. You're also going to have some new, uh, some obviously free items, or new cockpit items, sorry, with the Night Guyer. So you got the, the, the Maltese Griffin. Our Geyer Falcon thingamajiggy. Basically, it's like a little little statue. Uh, some steel talons, the Night Geyer Warhorn, and then Falcon Feathers. Gee, I wonder what the, th the theme is there. You're going to get the Sickle and the Nocturnal as well for badges. No big deal. For decals, they added a metric butt ton more. Uh, I think it's 77 in total. And they've also set it up so it changes into uh, settings as well. So when you're in the Mech Lab here, and you go to Camo... Oh, Yep, camo specs, whoops. Camo specs, I hit the wrong button. And you go to decal. Now in here, there is going to be uh, some additional options. So, it's actually going to work properly. So, faction one will only show faction specific detail. So, you're not going to see some of what I'm assuming is all this. You're actually going to see an actual faction-esque um, options. Like the actual faction 
uh, faction ones. Then you're going to have Celestial, Combat, Military, all that stuff. Lots of shit there. Uh, gameplay. Uh, they made some changes to the center leg slash arm lock. They fixed an issue where holding down the center leg command uh, will slowly adjust your arm and uh, with the arm even with arm lock off. And it could cause the mech to kind of, you know, jitter a little bit. No big deal. They made some changes to the command wheel. Uh, they made they added a, some sort of dead zone into it. Um, they made some map fixes and changes. So at Alpine Peaks, they made a couple changes associated with uh, shadowing. Uh, flickering issues on Canyon Network. Um, some issues where the water edge could go a little wonky on uh, on Canyon Network. On Caustic Valley, fixed an issue where someone could get stuck on pipes. On Crimson Street, there was a lot of changes. There's issues with uh, a bulldozer clipping through a radio tower. There's some issues with uh, collisions and clipping issues. S fix some issues with rendering issues on uh, one area of the map. And fixed an issue where an antenna was floating above one of the buildings, uh, which is pretty good. And um, there was actually... Uh, more than death just that it was actually doing it in both three or four different areas which is which is crazy uh, on emerald taiga they fixed some uh, lod issues which is pretty good on a forest colony they fixed some issues where rocks were uh weren't, weren't clipping properly sorry were clipping improperly uh forest colony as well fixed an area where a scudding beacon was clipping into the ground uh forest city they clicked uh, fixed a couple issues where uh wildling mechs could get on top of the ice wall. Interesting. Um, fix an issue where Mexico gets stuck, and then Mexico also gets stuck. They fixed that issue as well in a certain areas on uh, Grim Portico and Grim Plexus. Um, Grim Portico specifically, they fixed an issue where uh, you could uh, sink slightly in some ice or clip through some large crystals. And then last, be last but not least, uh, Tourmaline. They fixed an issue where Mexico just gets stuck in a four, just stuck. As if you were in mud, uh, happened to me a couple times. Uh, Emerald Tiger also received an Oriental, uh, sorry, a game oriented pass for various things as well. So the spawn points for the attackers were moved closer. Uh, were moved closer to the gates and moved closer together. Uh, they rotated Gen 2 to prevent sniping from F6. I think they rotated probably 90 degrees or so. Uh, they lowered a hill, they lowered the hill in F6 to obviously stop people from sniping down, which kind of sucks. Uh, they raised the mountain in G6 in front of the generators to prevent jump sniping. Uh, they raised the mountain in F3 as well in front of the uh, defender spawn to prevent spawn camping. Uh, they also probably stopped it from uh, LRMing from the base. Uh, there's a very interesting video where the guys from the 228 sat on Taiga um, basically LRM the other team to death. I think it was a counterattack, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they've cleared some pathways for the attacker and defender spawn points, and, uh, they moved some buildings around near, uh, near Omega. Overall fixes and changes, uh, they made some, fix an issue with, uh, the cockpit glass on the adder. Archer cheated, they fixed an issue with the warhorns, the atlas, they fixed an issue with bioluminescence behavior when walking through water. On the Black Knight, uh, they did the same thing with that. Um, same thing with the Cyclops, the crab, um... There's some issues with the dragon and the warhorn obscuring a few things, so they fixed that. Uh, Shadowhawk, they uh, changed the visibility of the uh, the hanging items, the Kodiak, the Mauler, the Panther, the Crab, the Grasshopper, and the Wolfhound all got the bioluminescence behavior when, agita when agitating water now as well. Uh, the Urban Mech, they fixed where the warhorn is, the Shadow Cat as well. Pretty good. Overall mech pattern retrofits, so they've changed up, uh, the, they gave the, the sick, this, wow, the Cataphrat, its hero and all variants, the ability to have, well, all patterns and all camo, and all, uh, faction patterns. Same with the Cicada, the Raven, the Spider, the Stalker, and the Trebuchet, which is pretty good. I like it. Um, I can't wait to, you know, be able to, uh, change the heroes to colors that I prefer. Um, usually I have my, my mechs, as you can see, all like this, but then the last one, which is always the hero, is always colored like a soul. Uh, other fixes and changes. They made some changes to the cockpit item screen. Uh, fixed the crash issue. With, uh, if you unplugged your Ethernet cable, apparently, and tried to go into Faction Warfare, the game crashed. I don't think that's a crash as much as it is you unplugged your Ethernet cable from your computer. The game was probably trying to access the information and went, oh, you're not on the internet anymore. Bye-bye. Uh, fix some issue with faction play associated with uh, multiple planets in a row click being clicked. 
um, issues with uh, logout while your unit's changing, things like that. Mech Lab, they fixed an issue where loader warnings and errors uh, could be hidden up here, so they've changed that. Uh, mech Stats window. Uh, where the pitch was labeled as yaw, they finally fixed that. Performance issues, the Compass Battle Grid updates, they've been merged into a single little thing at their, at the at the server end, uh, basically a server call. Um, so it's basically improved the problem. So instead of it asking for two different things, it now asks for the one, and they both and it, it goes both ways. Some video settings have been changed. The tool tips uh, been added for advanced video elements. Uh, the social window has been updated. The social window... Uh, the block tab has been added to the social window. Oh, okay. Uh, supply clashes. Um, you can now skip the spinning animation when you do one. And then VoIP settings. They've got to do some changes to that. Uh, if you want to do a direct download, um, you can go to... Give me one second. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't, usually they've got a website, but uh, there's no link as of yet in it. Uh, but yeah, you can actually also manually download the patch. I would advise you if you didn't have, don't worry about it. They've got Steam. Just fucking let it do its thing. Um... I mean, it does it all on its own, unless you'd like to do it yourself. It's up to you, right? But anyways, that is just a quick patch review for patch 1.4.84. No real big changes. There's a lot of fixes, uh, tweaks, modifications, things like that. Um, I like the fact that the, the, the patches are now going into a more 60% fixes and changes. Like fixes as in, and changes in the good part. Like changes in certain settings and screens and stuff. Then 2% of that... And like 90% of new mechs, new maps, mech twerk, mech quirk changes, and this and that, and everything else. Gameplay related stuff. But in the end, 60% of the patches seem to be now going for up, like basically fixes and performance changes and things like that, which is, in my eyes, going in a good direction. But until next time, see you on the battlefield. Bye bye.